Our next speaker is Dr. Michelle Petrie. Now, yesterday I gave uh, Yehuda Schoenfeld a little compliment, saying that, you know, when you talk about Yehuda, you know who it is. Well, you know, if somebody in the room just tells you that they called Michelle and she told them of what to do in, room, in lupus, you know, that we know what all that means. So we have Adele, you know, who's won all these Grammys. We have Enya. We have Oprah. And now we have Michelle, <laughs> rock star of rheumatology. And she's going to give us an update on antiphospholipids. But David, I want their millions for lupus research. <laughs> now, I can never equal yesterday with bombs going off in the middle of my talk. So. I have no disclosures, and here are my objectives. So I'm going to start with a real patient. Sally was 17, perfectly healthy, had just run a marathon, and she developed an ovarian cyst and her gynecologist treated it appropriately with oral contraceptives. But she started to bruise all over and saw a pediatric hematologist who found thrombocytopenia and referred her to me because she thought it was OCP-induced lupus. I was the one to do the urinalysis and found out she was nephrotic with some hematuria. She was still thrombocytopenic on a lot of prednisone, so I actually had a urologist do her kidney biopsy laparoscopically. And I got a call from the urologist that night that she had gone into congestive heart failure and was in the intensive care unit of our sister hospital, Bayview. I got her back to Hopkins the next day. By then, she was also in renal failure. Now, I got the call from the pathologist about her kidney biopsy. And to my surprise, it wasn't lupus. It was APS. Now. Thankfully, most APS nephropathy doesn't present acutely with renal failure. It presents chronically with hypertension and proteinuria. So I don't want you to forget this. And in patients that have both lupus and antiphosphate antibodies, one reason to do a kidney biopsy is to determine whether you're dealing with lupus or you're dealing with APS of the kidney. So here is Sally's renal biopsy with all of these fibrin thrombi. Now, we treated her with triple therapy for CAPS. And you'll remember, of course, triple therapy, the IV methylprednisolone is to treat the cytokine storm, heparin to prevent further thrombi, and plasma exchange to remove as many of the circulating antiphosphate antibodies that you can. And she did come off the ventilator. Her renal failure remained. And unfortunately, she died not from caps, but from mucormycosis of the stomach. So you never, ever forget patients like this. You know, in rheumatology, even when we do everything right, the outcome can still be wrong. But I don't want you to think that all outcomes are this devastating. I want to tell you a good news story. So one of my lupus patients had diagnosed APS and was on warfarin, and she needed a kidney biopsy because her protein was going up. So we appropriately bridged her with low molecular weight heparin, both before and after her biopsy. And the day after her biopsy, she was sent home. Now, she pulled off the road to email me that her ear was hurting. So I got the email, I replied back, you know, please come off the highway again and photograph your ear and send me the email. And of course you can guess what the photograph showed. She had necrosed her outer ear. And I said, this time turn around and come right back to Hopkins. I had the emergency room literally waiting for her, ready to give her intravenous methylprednisolone and therapeutic doses of intravenous heparin. By the time we got repeat labs, her creatinine had doubled, her platelets had gone from 110 to like 40. She of course survived because we caught it so early. So I'm in favor of selfies. It just has to be a selfie of the ear. <laughs> <laughs> 